in the chapter of applications of thermodynamics in two phase equilibrium after giving full information about this preliminary idea of this depression of a freezing point of solutions now i derive the raoult's law thermodynamically raoult's law of depression of freezing point of solutions thermodynamically using the concept of the chemical potential and you see i have given a picture here this is the container fitted with a piston and this container is having the liquid solution of mole fractions of the solvent x1 and here it is a pure a solid solvent at a pressure external pressure p and temperature t and uh, you know this uh, there is no question of having this uh, vapor it is the uh, two phase equilibrium of the solvent solvent is in solution solvent is in solid solid state this is liquid state and this is the solid state at an external pressure p so there are three variables a pressure x1 and t t is the equilibrium temperature means the temperature at which these two phases are at equilibrium and uh, the actually three phases three variables are not independent variables if we see how much the variables are independent then we shall have to look at this uh, phase rule this uh, phase rule uh, developed by the willier gives in 1837 and this willier gives this given a very fantastic uh, formula this f equal to c minus p plus 2 this is the simple formula and by the use of this formula it is possible to explain a diverse uh, equilibrium uh, of multi phase multi component system here in our cases this f is the number of number of degrees of freedom it is the number of independent intensive variables and they could be they could be changed independently without altering the number of phases of this system here it is the number of a component it is the number of independent chemical constituents it means that if the addition of one constituent does not affect the other constituents then it is called the independent chemical constituents and this one this one is a number of phases number of phases already you know the phase definition of this phase it is the homogeneous homogeneous in itself and uh, separate and separated from other phases by a definite boundary this is also mechanically separable and two is the numerical um, term numerical figure one is for pressure and other for the temperature this is the total f equal to c minus p plus 2 in our case if we apply this phase rule to our system then f equal to here c is 2 2 components are there one is solvent and other is solute so instead of c we can write 2 and number of phases are also 2 here the one liquid f Phase and other is this a solid phase. So this is equal to two and plus two equal to two. And uh, it means that 
though we are having these uh, three variables, the uh, pressure, x1 and the temperature, but actually two variables we can change independently according to our own choice. Third variable will be fixed up depending on the magnitude of this other two. Here I can say this uh, if we change this uh, pressure and the mole fraction of, of the solids, mole fraction of the solvent in solution, then this uh, T will be fixed depending on the value of this uh, two. So mathematically I can write Mathematically, I can write this uh, T is a function of pressure and X1. Means these are the two independent variables which will control the value of this uh, T. T means at the, the temperature at which these two phases are at equilibrium. Whenever this, uh, this is also called the freezing temperature of this solution or the melting temperature of this solid. Both are same under the pressure P, uh, under the pressure P and mole fractions uh, of this uh, solvent is X1. So, uh, when, when X1 is also, uh, also also get fixed x1 is also kept fixed means liquid solution have been kept mole fraction of the solvent in solution kept fixed then t t is a function of the p only it means that if we change under these conditions this external pressure then equilibrium temperature is also changed. How this change occurs that will be described, that is described by Tetheran equation. Tetheran equation gives an idea uh, of this effect of external pressure on this freezing point or this uh, melting point of this uh, system. And uh, this one is dp by dt equal to LF bar divided by T into this VL bar minus VS bar bracket close. Here, here this uh, dp dp by dt is the amount of pressure required to change this equilibrium temperature by 1 degree and LV is the molar latent heat of fusion or molar latent heat of melting T the equilibrium temperature and V L bar is the volume molar volume of this substance in liquid phase and this is the molar volume of the substance in solid phase and it is the process is the solid to liquid and this process is called the fusion fusion or, or melting fusion of a solid so for most of the substances for uh, for most of the for most of the substances this uh, v l bar is greater than a v s bar and uh, and this l f bar is always a positive positive always and this process is endothermic and so this uh, molar latent heat of fusion is always a positive. So it, whenever, for, for most of the substances, uh, this one, this uh, dp by uh, dp by dp, dp equal to positive. Means if we, if we increase this external pressure, then this equilibrium temperature will also increase. 
means either the freezing point of this liquid or the melting point of the solid both will increase with this increase of pressure but only for water water is a special substance showing this abnormal behavior due to the presence of a hydrogen bonding and so for water actually vl bar is less than vx bar ice ice is uh, having um, having higher molar volume than this liquid water so this one is this one is always positive so here this dp by dt is equal to negative negative uh, negative means say uh, if we in this case if we increase this uh, pressure then this equilibrium temperature is uh, decreased it is already known to all that with this with the increase of this external pressure the melting point of ice will lower down now i shall explain the second point now i shall explain this second point Second point of when when P is kept a constant is a kept a constant or fixed, then T is a function of x one only. In in general case, this external pressure is fixed and it is kept at one atmosphere. In this case, this uh, there is no need for the piston. This uh, this uh, system is exposed to air, exposed to air, air having this one atmospheric pressure. Uh, so in this case, if we change this x one, then t will also change. When when x one equal to one. One means a pure solvent. X one equal to one means a pure solvent. Then T is called T F naught. It is the freezing point, freezing point of a pure solvent. Freezing point of this a pure solvent, and uh, and if you know. Whenever the pressure has been kept at one atmosphere, this is called the normal freezing point of this pure solvent. But when, but uh, uh, when x x one less than one means it is the solution. It is the solvent representing solution less than one, and in this case, this uh, T. Equilibrium temperature is called this T F, means a freezing point of solution. Now during this uh, derivation, pressure have been kept constant all along this uh, derivation, and I like to see how much uh, this uh, T, this uh, freezing point or melting point will change with this uh, change of this uh, value of x1 in this uh, solution. This is our motto uh, in this uh, derivation. And this derivation I like to use the chemical potential which is a very powerful the thermodynamic uh, property. And, uh, and you know here and it is shown this solvent uh, solvent remains in equilibrium solvent in solid state in solid pure solid pure uh, solid phase is in equilibrium with solvent in liquid solution 
liquid solution phase means uh, this uh, solvent a uh, solvent remains in two phases and uh, and and whenever the solvent remains in two phases at equilibrium this one is the solvent remains in pure solid solvent pure solid solvent uh, and this one is the liquid liquid uh, solution at phase a solvent also required so thermodynamically whenever the substance remains in two phases at equilibrium the chemical potential of the solvent in these two phases uh, equ uh, becomes equal so we can write this mu one not s equal to mu one a at temperature t and press and temperature t and pressure external pressure p this is also at the temperature t and pressure p so this one is the chemical potential of this solvent in pure solid state or chemical potential of this pure solvent in solid state and it is the chemical potential of the solvent in, in liquid phase here superscript is omitted uh, superscript not is omitted since the solvent here remains in a mixture not in a pure state if, uh, if the solution behaves ideally ideally uh, Laue's law is valid only for this ideal solutions or you can say ideally a diluted solution. Whenever the solution behaves ideally, this uh, mu 1 L, we can write uh, mu 1 not L plus RT ln X1. X1. More fraction will be used. If the solution is not ideal, if the solution is the real, then in that case, this X1 will be replaced by the activity of this solvent in solution. So, if we put this one here, then actually mu one not S equal to mu one not A and plus RD ln X1. If we bring this term to this left and divide by t, then it will be this mu one not s divided by t and minus uh, mu one not l divided by t, and this is equal to r ln x1. Now we like to actually see the variation of temperature with this change of x1. So we we have to differentiate this x1 with respect to t at constant pressure. It means that the this uh, uh, del by del t and mu one not s by t and uh, at a constant pressure. Constant pressure, this one uh, minus and also del by del t and uh, mu one not l divided by t at constant pressure, and this one is equal to r uh, d by del by del by del t and ln x one bracket that close at a constant pressure constant pressure r d del by del t ln x1 at a constant pressure but we, we know the from thermodynamics very important equation and this equation is gibbs selmont equations this gibbs selmont equation gives Helmholtz very important equation in thermodynamics it is 
del by del t and mu by t at constant pressure equal to minus a t bar divided by t square. This mu is the molar free energy and this h bar is the molar enthalpy of this system in the temperature. So if we apply the Gibbs Selwood equation to this approach, to this above equation of so our interest, then we can get here minus h1 naught bar s. It is the molar enthalpy of this pure solvent in solid phase divided by t square minus h1 naught bar a divided by t square this is the molar uh, enthalpy of this uh, pure solvent in liquid phase and t the temperature and this one equal to this uh, one r and d by dt d by dt and ln x1 d by dt ln x1 if we if we simplify this one then t square will get common and here h1 not bar l minus h1 h1 not bar s this one minus minus plus so comes here and this is equal to r d by dt dt and ln x1 and this one actually uh, h1 bar s and h1 bar a so when the change occurs this uh, del h uh, one not bar fusion fusion is equal to h final set h not bar a uh, minus h one not uh, bar s final minus initial and this one is called the molar enthalpy change, molar enthalpy change of this pure solvent for this process of the fusion and this one is always a positive since the fusion process is all endothermic. So this one we can write, this, uh, this one we can write L, F, L, L, F, not one, not is omitted as for this uh, pure uh, solution actually heat of fusion and partial molar latent heat of fusion is same for this ideal solution uh, only and we have the chosen this ideal solution so from this uh, very uh, beginning so instead of this one I can write this L F bar and divided by R dt coming here dt and divided by uh, t square, t square, and uh, this one equal to uh, d and ln x1. Now we like to integrate both sides with the proper limit. When it is the, it, when x1 equal to 1, this one, the equilibrium temperature of this uh, pure uh, solvent, this is pure solvent, so T1 naught, Tf naught, Tf naught, and when X1 solution and it is the Tf, and you see the Lf molar latent heat of fusion will not uh, change so much within this uh, temperature range dt. Temperature range is very small uh, for this depression of the freezing point. So whenever we do this integration, we do this integration, then actually 
electric bar, molar latent heat of fusion uh, divided by R and here 1 by T and this uh, limit is a Tf not lower limit, a Tf is upper limit and this one equal to this uh, ln, ln x1 and upper lower limit 1, upper limit x1. And putting this limit here, this minus coming here, uh, minus Lf bar divided by R and uh, it is 1 by Tf upper limit minus 1 by uh, Tf naught lower limit and this one equal to Ln x1 minus Ln1. And this we can write uh, minus Lf bar by R and here Tf naught minus Tf and, uh, and Tf Tf naught bracket close and this one is Ln x1. Instead of x1, it is very usual to express this concentration of the solutions in terms of the mole fraction of a solute. So we know this x1 plus x2 equal to 1. So instead of x1, we can write 1 minus x2. So here uh, we can write uh, ln 1 minus x2. And, and this one, another thing is that since we are considering the, since we are considering the very dilute solution, ideally diluted solution for that, for which only the Raoult's law is valid. So x2, x2 is much less than 1. So ln 1 minus x2, if we expand, then it will be minus x2, minus x2 square by 2, and minus x2 cube by 3, and then so on. But since x2 is a fraction, x2 is fraction, very small values, half powers you can neglect half parts you can neglect and so this one we give it minus x2 only minus x2 and this minus and this minus you can cancel so the relation is and instead of a tf a tf naught they are very close tf and tf naught are very close so actually, instead of writing this uh, Ta, we can write uh, Tf equal to Tf naught, and the product of this uh, two, we can easily uh, write uh, Tf naught a uh, whole square. Since uh, Tf naught is more fundamental than Tf, Tf depends on this uh, x1, but uh, Tf naught is fixed, uh, fixed for a pure solvent at given pressure. So, so P whenever the one atmosphere, then Tf naught is the normal freezing point of this pure solvent. So, we can write this uh, Tf naught minus uh, Tf and this one is Tf naught whole square. So, this one equal to this R Tf naught and whole square and divided by Lf bar, Lf bar into, into x2, into x2. So from this it is very clear that if we increase this mole fraction of this solute in solution, if the x2 is increased, then, then the freezing point of the solution is decreased. Means there will be more depression of this freezing point of the solutions with the increase of x2. And uh, or I can write x1. If x1 is less, 
in this solution, small fraction of the solvent, uh, then Pf is also less. Now I uh, like to this one is the delta Tf, depression of filling point. So actually delta Tf uh, as a delta Tf equal to Tf naught minus Tf Tf. So delta Tf depression of freezing point is equal to R uh, Tf naught whole square and divided by Lv Lf molar latent heat of effusion and into X2. If we like to change this uh, mole fraction of the solute in terms of this molality of the solutions, uh, uh, then it will be R Tf naught whole square and divided by 10 to the power 10 to the power 3 into Na. This is the latent heat of uh, fusion for per gram of this pure solvent, per gram of this pure solvent, this is taken in bracket and here and, and into W2 into 10 to the power 3 divided by W1 into M2. M2 is the molar mass of this solute. So, So this term is constant and this term depends only for this uh, for the nature of this uh, solvent or characteristic properties of the solvent. So this is the property of the solvent. This one is uh, taken as gasoscopic constant, gasoscopic constant, and this one is this uh, molality. So uh, here actually. Gasoscopic constant. Uh, while we are deriving this uh, relation, this Rao's law, automatically we are getting this expression of this uh, K in terms of this uh, properties of this uh, solvent. And this uh, K A, which is called cryoscopic constant, cryoscopic constant of this solvent. Gasoscopic of the solvent, and uh, or you can say it is the molar molar. Uh, it is called the molar depression constant of this uh, solvent, and this one is equal to R T F naught and whole square divided by ten to the power three and L. If we like to calculate this gasoscopic uh, constant for the solvent, then these two properties of the solvent are needed. So actually for if we calculate this uh, water uh, for water different solvents are having this different values of a Kf cryoscopic constant depending on these uh, two values. So here this um, for water this Kf is equal to R, the value of R is 2 calorie mole inverse Kelvin inverse and into, if we keep this pressure 1 atmosphere external pressure, then, then the freezing, then the freezing point of this pure water is 0 degree centigrade or 273.1 Kelvin square and divide by this 10 to the power of 3 gram kg inverse and the latent heat of fusion per gram of water is 80 calorie gram inverse. So if we do this calculations then it will be 1.86 Kelvin and kg and mole inverse or you can write 1.86 uh, Kelvin and molar 
more than inverse. So we can also calculate this k for the other solvents also. Now I like to uh, illustrate this subject matter by giving a problem. This uh, problem is very simple and you know this uh, sulfur sulfur dissolves in in bending as S X polymeric form of sulfur a 25% a 0.25% solution 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 of sulfur in benzene shows that Tf equal to 0 0.05 Kelvin the uh, Kf for benzene is 5.0 uh, Kelvin kg inverse mole inverse then find x find x this is the problem it has been uh, in, it, it has been set in different uh, net and gate examinations also in university examination, say Barwan University, Barwan University 2000-2002. And this uh, calculations will be this uh, formula delta Tf equal to Kf into, into W2 into 10 to the power 3 divided by W1 into M2. This is the Raoult's law, depression of a freezing point, this is the molality. So here, delta Tf equal to 0 0.05 and it is a 5.05 Kelvin and it is 5.0 Kelvin into this 0.25% means 0.25 gram of this sulfur is dissolved in 99.75 gram benzene. So this will be this 0.25 into 10 to the power this is gram and into 10 to the power it is gram and kg inverse and divide by this one is 99.75 gram uh, and this molar mass m s s this is to be calculated uh, from this equation so m s is x equal to uh, this uh, 5.0 kelvin 5.0 Kelvin, Kelvin Kelvin cancels, cancels, and gram gram cancels, and uh, so gram gram cancel, and so this one. is giving a mistake. Here 0 0.05 Kelvin equal to the value of K is a 5.0 Kelvin kg inverse kg and mole inverse mole inverse. So Kelvin Kelvin cancels kg kg inverse cancel and uh, gram gram cancel so m s x equal to this uh, 5.0 uh, and product of this two is uh, 250 and divided by uh, 
and this 99.75 into um, into this 0 0.05 and the unit will remain gram mole inverse. If we do this calculation, so then this will be 250. 250 here cancels 100 and this is also 100, almost 100. So according to 250 gram mole inverse. So from this value, from this value, this molar mass of this Sx equal to molar mass of this sulfur into x. x is the number of atoms associated to form, the, form this Sx. So x, this one, this one is a 250, 250 gram per mole. And this one is a 32 gram per mole into x, or, or you can say x equal to 250 divided by 32, and this is a 7.8. But this x, x is, x is uh, the always integer as the number atoms are not divisible. So this is this we can write this eight. So sulfur dissolved in benzene as sulfur dissolved in benzene as S8. Eight atoms of sulfur uh, associated to form to form this uh, polymer which is dissolved in benzene. Now let us see what happens when is when this solute uh, is soluble in solid solvent that means so when uh, when this solute is soluble in solid solvent in this case you can see the here this is the piston P, piston P is equal to the external, external pressure and the system contains this liquid, liquid solution or mole fraction X1, mole fraction of the, mole fraction of the solvent is X1 and it is the solid solvent, solid solution solid solution and mole fraction x1 dash at the same temperature p and pressure p and this solvent remains in equilibrium between these two phases here the one peculiarity is that the solute is also dissolved or soluble in solid solvent so we are getting these two solutions one is liquid solution and other is solid solutions this one is the mole fraction of the solvent in liquid solution and x1 dash is the mole fraction of the solvent in solid solution. So in this case, the equilibrium is uh, solvent in solid, solid solution and uh, this uh, solvent in liquid solutions. So here also solvent remains in two phases at equilibrium. So thermodynamic condition will be like that mu 1 s equal to mu 1 l. Not superscript is omitted since the solvent here remains in a mixture not in a pure state. So if these uh, two solutions behave ideally as we have assumed from the very beginning, then this could be written as mu one not s plus rt ln ln x1 dash. x1 dash is the mole fraction of the solvent in solid solution. And this one equal to mu one not l and plus rt ln 
ln x1. So if we bring this one and divide it by t, then mu 1 naught s divided by t minus mu 1 naught l divided by a t equal to r r and here ln ln x1 minus ln x1 dash. As before we can do it uh, to get this variation of this uh, temperature with, the, with x1, uh, we like to differentiate with respect to T at constant pressure and we can use the gibbs Salmoz equation and then uh, make the subsequent steps. Ultimately, we get this L F bar divided by R into delta T F and divided by T F naught whole square equal to X2 minus X2 dash. X2 is the mole fraction of the solute. Mole fraction of the solute in liquid solution. X2 dash is the mole of solute in solid solution. So students are uh, requested to do the intermediate steps to arrive at this uh, formula. So this also you can write this x2 common 1 minus x2 dash divided by x2. x2. So several steps is omitted and the students or the learners are requested to take this steps at top only. So this delta T A depression of filling point in this case is equal to R T F not the whole square and divided by L F bar. L F bar and uh, and uh, this and uh, this is in bracket and x2 into 1 minus k where k is equal to x2 dash divided by x2 so if we convert now this one in terms of this uh, molality uh, then it will be this uh, this Kf into molality and 1 minus K and this is the delta Tf. We can arrive at this formula uh, whenever the solute is soluble in solid solvent. Now see what happens. We can draw some conclusions. We can draw some conclusions. Conclusion number one when k equal to 0. k equal to 0 means k equal to 0 means x2 dash equal to 0. Means the solute is not soluble in solid solvent. So in this case delta Tf equal to Kf into M and this allows law Rao's law is obeyed. Rao's law is obeyed. But the second case we can come up when when k is less than one. Then in this case x2 dash is less than x2 means that the solute is uh, more soluble in liquid solution uh, than in a solid solution. Uh, so, uh, mole fraction of the solute is greater, uh, in, greater in this liquid solution than in solid solutions. So, in this case, this uh, delta Tf, delta Tf equal to delta Tf is less than Kf into M. Kf into M. 
means the repression of freezing point, the repression of freezing point will be the less than that predicted by the Raoult's law of repression of freezing point. And the third case is most, most interesting. Third case is most interesting. Uh, this uh, third, when k equal to k is greater than one. So in this case, x2 is greater than x2 dash is greater than x2. Means the solute is more soluble in solid solvent than in liquid solvent. In this case, this uh, delta T A is negative. This one is greater than one, so this term is and the delta T F is negative. These are all positive. So delta T F means T F not minus T F is negative. What does it mean? Means that T F is T F is greater than T F not. T F is greater than T F not. Means whenever this situation comes up. When the solute is more soluble in solid solvent than the liquid solvent, the freezing point of the solution is elevated. Freezing point of the solution is greater than the freezing point of this of this pure solvent at a given pressure. So actually, there occurs this elevation of freezing point. This is the rare case, and in case of this nickel copper alloy. Nickel is found to be nickel is found to be more soluble in solid copper than in molten copper, and there occurs the elevation of a boil elevation of elevation elevation of a freezing point elevation of freezing point of the solution when the solute is more soluble in solid solvent than in liquid solvent. This is all about the uh, derivation, touching all possible uh, points for greater information. And next day, derivations of this depression of freezing point of the solution. So next class, I will try to explain the osmotic pressure and its derivation and different uh, colorful facets of this osmosis. Thank you all who are watching this video.